Hello, this is Debbie Kay with the League of Women Voters of Portland. With the support of Metro East Community Media, we're interviewing candidates for the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Leah Lafleur, running for Metro Councilor District 6. Welcome, Leah. Hi, Debbie. It's great to be here. Thank you. You're very welcome. Tell us a little about yourself and why you're running for this office. Well, um, when I was in eighth grade, I learned that the earth is a closed system. And it was that time that I asked myself the question, can we really throw anything away if there is no such place as a way in a closed system? And that got me interested in garbage and what we do with our garbage. Um, right now, uh, I would say that we are at a crisis point with our garbage. Um, as a people, we have only come up with two things to do with our garbage, which is either burn it or bury it. Um, I think that uh, we need to modernize our solid waste system. Uh, and one thing that we can do is use a waste energy technology that's already being employed by Metro. Um, and this technology uh, converts any hydrocarbon, um, including plastics, into a liquid um, biofuel. Uh, which then can be used um, to run generators or vehicles. Um, so and as 30% uh, of our plastic waste um, is, is all that gets recycled, truly, uh, the other 70% ends up in landfills. And I think that it's important that we take the steps now, especially since China is no longer taking our recyclables, um, to uh, change how we manage our solid waste, particularly our plastics waste. Um, I also feel very strongly uh, that we need to be uh, doing as much as we can regionally to help our um, citizens who are experiencing crises, particularly when it comes to homelessness. And I am a very strong supporter of the work of the Here Together Coalition um, and their work on Measure 26210 uh, to get a high earner um, tax uh, to pay for support services uh, to help homeless people get off the street and to maintain housing. Thank you. What, what challenges to the effective and efficient operation of our metropolitan government do you think will result from the pandemic? And how do you propose to meet those challenges? Well, um, a lot of times when I see things change, um, particularly when I see loss of services, loss of income, loss of um, the normal circumstance, what I see is an opening for opportunities. And um, as we move into the new normal, I really see a lot of opportunities for Metro to uh, hire back uh, employees that they had previously outsourced. I think that that is going to be a very important thing for Metro to do. Um, I know that a lot of the uh, zoo employees um, who were uh, uh, in facilities that were outsourced to Aramark had a lower standard of living compared to other Metro employees. Um, this public-private partnership, I would say, benefited private companies at the expense of public, including Metro employees. And I would like to see um, outsourced jobs from Metro um, return to Metro. I think that's a real opportunity that we have um, as we unravel things and then um, are able to build back things in a new and better way. Hey, Metro's in the process of drafting a regional transportation measure. What expectations do you have that the planned expenditures will achieve state and regional goals for reducing greenhouse emissions? Um, well, there's a lot of different types of things in the um, transportation plan, and, and they are estimated to be funded at different amounts. Um, as far as the um, I-5 uh, plan, I don't necessarily know that um, expanding um, uh, the transportation corridor, uh, which will increase traffic volume, will necessarily work towards the goals of carbon reduction. Um, I think that uh, prioritizing funding to uh, projects that um, 
increased use of public transportation, um, increase their accessibility and availability, particularly through the use of infrastructure projects um, like road improvements, adding bicycle lanes, and um, adding sidewalks to places in the city that do not have sidewalks, uh, not only will work towards the goals of greenhouse gas reductions, but also significantly improve safety in these communities. Um, when I think about uh, Powell Boulevard, which is also um, Oregon 26, and when I think about 82nd, which is also Oregon State 213, um, those interjurisdictional uh, roads have had a difficult time um, getting funding because of the interjurisdictional issues. Um, I think that it's very important that Metro step in in this type of area to work hard to um, add infrastructure, uh, particularly infrastructure that supports um, public transportation and works towards community safety. Thank you. How would you assess Metro's efforts to address affordable housing and homelessness crisis? Um, well, I, I'm very glad that the 2018 uh, Metro housing bond passed. Um, it was important that Metro uh, weigh in in this uh, discussion. Um, the downside, I would say, is that even though the bond did pass, it only created 3,900 units of permanently affordable housing. And this is just the tip of the iceberg for people who are struggling with housing currently. Um, that's why another reason that I'm such a strong supporter of the um, Metro 26210 um, uh, homeless services tax, which is going on the May ballot right now. Um, I think that it's so important that the coalition of communities that came together did so to create this um, measure. What where previously um, this work had been heavily shouldered by um, social service and community organizations. Um, in the um, getting there together coalition, it was both these traditionally represented organizations as well as business interests who came together to create a mutually beneficial agreement. Um, it is so important that business interests are at the table and, and can recognize how important the houseless crisis in this area is and that it is affecting regional businesses. So to have a comprehensive uh, solution that addresses both the needs of the affected houseless communities and how businesses are affected by houselessness in the region, I think was a very important step. And I am very, uh, excited to see this measure pass. It has not only a funding mechanism, but also accountability mechanisms to make sure that the funds are being appropriately spent in services that directly help people who are houseless and people who have transitioned into housing to maintain their housing. Well, thank you very much. You've essentially answered the fifth question and we're out of time. So thank you very much for joining us today. This, thank has, you. Been, this has been the Video Voters Guide. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Please be an informed voter. Visit vote411.org for information about all the races on your ballot and exercise your right to vote. Thank you for watching.